Back in the 1990s, when there were no private independent broadcasting stations, he was already extremely on the ball, our next speaker. That's why one could call him an institution or a founding father of modern investigative journalism. He became an unflinching giant of truth. And his ability to connect the dots out of a general overview is simply breathtaking. At this point, we thank him for the privilege that he placed his own television studio in England at our disposal to answer our questions on most current topics. And I say thank you, David Icke. We need you. David Icke was born on the 29th of April 1952 in Leicester and is father of four. He was a professional footballer till age 21 and after that he became a sports reporter for several outlets and a presenter on the BBC's Newsnight and the sports show Grand Stand. After a deep spiritual experience in 1990, he began publishing and expressing views and perspectives that were outside of the mainstream, which he was massively ridiculed and slandered for publicly. He has written over 20 books and bestsellers, among which are titles like Everything You Need to Know But Were Never Told and Human Race Get Off Your Knees. For the past decades, Ike has been a full-time investigative journalist, starting his own website, davidike.com, his own streaming platform, Iconic, and his own social network. He has been giving speeches and videocasts, sharing analysis and commentary, connecting the dots of world events and the forces behind them. In 1998, David issued a warning regarding the implementation of a global currency that would solely be electronic, the expansion of a global military to the east, and he predicted the plan to insert microchips into the population, making them controllable. In 2020, he was banned from YouTube, Facebook and Twitter for sharing information and views that differed from the official narrative of Corona politics. His videos at the time had more than 30 million views. In November 2022, he was banned from entering all 29 Schengen countries in an attempt to keep him from speaking at a peace rally in Amsterdam. Today, after 34 years, Ike is still as active as ever exposing conspiracies in media, politics and all other areas of control. He has given speeches in 25 plus countries and more than 900,000 people subscribe to his channels. Today, David Ike is connecting some dots for us about world tyranny and its war strategies. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Does everybody hear us? Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you, David Icke, for, for having us here in your studio for the 20th AZK. Yeah, no problem. Been really nice to have you. That's wonderful. Um, now, amongst many of your uh, series that you do is the dot connector series what is that about what's your what's your thought behind it dot connector um if you look at the world as a series of random events random happenings it makes no sense why do they do that why do they do it this way why do they do it that way It'd be much better if they did it that way and so on and so forth why does this happen um but when you connect the dots, you connect these events, you find that actually they do all connect. And, you know, people say sometimes about me, you see a conspiracy everywhere. No, I don't. I see one conspiracy to turn the world into a global dystopia. And that one conspiracy has 
endless facets and forms. Um, but um, it's actually one conspiracy. It's one gigantic web. And uh, that's uh, literally true in terms of what I call the global cult, right. which is a, a global network of secret societies um, which are operating outside um, or in the shadows from those that appear to be running the world. That is that is interesting. And, and we'll get into this deeper a bit in the next questions because I would love to do kind of this dot connecting style of okay. this interview that we... We look at different, uh, seemingly unrelated topics and and find out how they're connected. Um, so let, let's start with the first one, like in every good conversation with the with the weather. And, yeah. and here are a few of the. It's been a great summer, isn't it? <laughs> it has, <laughs> nice and cool here in Europe, in Germany at least. <laughs> I was in Britain. Uh, well, yeah, you had the heating on. <laughs> right. S sat watching the telly in a coat. Yeah, it's been really warm here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's that's a classic. Um, I have a, um, a phrase, uh, know the outcome and you'll see the journey. Right. Um, and what I mean by that is if you know where we're being taken, the steps to take us there then become obvious day by day, week by week. Um, and the outcome is that is planned is that we um, live in a centrally dictated global dystopia where in the end there are even no elected politicians uh, what they call a technocracy of appointed people appointed bureaucrats uh, oh european union um, appointed bureaucrats and technocrats and uh, and engineers and um, health experts and all this stuff who actually are making the decisions from a central global point. Look at the World Health Organization. That's the stepping stone towards this um, uh, global dystopia. So that's where they're taking us. The idea is uh, also uh, because if you um, look at the whole foundation of this global conspiracy of human control, It's based on perceptual control. Right. We, we behave as we do because we perceive as we do. Mm -hmm. People um, caved in to the COVID hoax because they perceived there was a dangerous virus and they perceived that the fake vaccine, not a vaccine under previous criteria, was a way to save them from the dangerous virus. That perception led to people um, submitting to um, what were fascistic um, impositions yeah. all over the world. So if you want to control behavior, you have to control perception. And if you control behavior, well, collectively, that's what we call human society. Right. Um, and, and then you ask the question, um, Where do perceptions come from? Well, they come from information received, whether it's a, a news bulletin, a posting on Facebook, personal experience. Exactly. We, we, we form our perceptions from information we receive, and from those perceptions come our behavior, and collectively that behavior is human society. And this is where censorship comes in. Because censorship is about seeking to control the information that people receive, thus controlling their perception. Uh, so uh, this is why during the, the COVID hoax, anyone that was challenging the official narrative and then challenging the official narrative of the fake vaccine, um, they were, like me, <laughs> um, Uh, deleted Man. from from the uh, the mainstream internet, from YouTube, from Facebook, right. and, and and what have you, because of control of perception. And the idea is that, um, and this has long been the plan all along, that you um, move communication of information from the sources that we remember onto the internet. Because once you've got them onto the internet, you can algorithmically 
dictate what people see or hear to the point where they can even stop things being posted. Never mind take them down once they're up, stop them being posted through keywords and what, and what have you. So um, uh, immediately from a, you know, a, 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 a question about um, the weather, we, we're connecting all these, 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 these other dots, which right. are actually part of the same um, stepping stone to this outcome of global dystopia. So why, why, why global warming? Why, uh, well, it's, it's climate change now since it stopped getting warmer. Um, but the, and, and why, why, why is it that um, they are demonizing the gas of life without carbon dioxide, without which we'd all be dead? There'd be no food, there'd be no plant life, nothing. And they're bringing it to a new level because like what's currently very much in the news, I read just recently that they have these suspected heat-related deaths that are popping oh, up yeah. everywhere. Like, 2% of all deaths in New York during the summertime, this is officially in the mainstream media, yeah. are heat-related. Well, they, they wouldn't be in Britain in this, in this summer for a start. But, but the well, point what is, is going on there? That, that in terms of weather deaths, it's cold that kills the, the, the far, far greater number of people. But here's the point, okay? Yeah. You want to um, create um, a society in which um, people are um, herded and corralled into um, very small areas in which they can move, what they call these 15-minute cities. Um, you want to stop travel um, long distance, even, even eventually even much short distance travel. You want to transform the nature of global society, okay? So what is the basis of global society in terms of the economy and the, the, the sense of where, how we live? It's fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. That's what has driven the industrial revolution and everything that's come from that. Now, here's the real point of net zero. If you set a net zero target for carbon dioxide, you don't really have to do much more because once you've set that target and you've said, I don't know, 20, 30, uh, 50 or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Right. To meet that target, by definition, human society has to be transformed. Exactly. Purely to meet that target. And, that, and, and, and of course, fossil fuels have to, have to basically disappear and all this other stuff. We have to destroy the landscape with wind turbines that are in, incredibly uh, um, fossil fuel um, uh, based. Uh, driven. Yeah, based, yeah. But don't, don't tell them that because um, what, what, we, what we need to do is to create this um, hysteria of we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. um, to, to meet this target, because this target will, by definition, reaching it, will transform human society. And to, to meet it, so many things have to change. Uh, cars have to, have to basically be dramatically, vehicles have to dramatically uh, uh, reduced. Uh, reduced. Um, and, 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 and movement and travel have to be dramatically uh, reduced. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's another agenda going on in the background that, that of course, they, they know that it's all a nonsense. But in the public arena, um, the nonsense is being advanced and the, the nonsense is being uh, driven because of what it will achieve, which is a complete transformation of human society. Wow. That's interesting because looking at that agenda, um, we could go on to the next dot, which would be, for example, the economic uh, yeah, development that we're in. We've had COVID, we have wars with all these sanctions that are being enforced. We have the Fed put, keeping the, the interest rates high and everything, and we see that that basically is destroying the economy all over the world, or at least we feel that in Germany, people are being laid off. And even big pharma and big tech, who actually were, were reaping billions and are reaping billions, and everybody's investing there, uh, even they are laying off people and are kind of, yeah, complaining that they have billions in losses and everything. Yeah, and but what, they're, what is they're going laying on off here? a lot of people because AI is taking over, you know. Right, right. So, so the question is like, 
will the economy recover in time or is this a plan? Is, is there a goal behind this? Right. Do they uh, want uh, the economy down or what is going on here? Right. Again, um, know the outcome and you'll see the journey. Yeah. The outcome is um, the population globally under um, a situation of dependency. Now, whatever you are dependent upon controls you. And so they want you dependent upon this global cult in all its forms called governments, whatever, to, um, to the point where they um, destroy the economy and the jobs um, with AI and with net zero. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, all these industrial um, uh, ways that we've we've lived in the in the industrial revolution period, um, they have to go um, because uh, you can't meet net zero otherwise. Yeah, um, and so you 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 are um, erasing not least through AI, you are erasing the ability to earn a living in the way that we've come to know it. And so the idea, because, you know, I, I came up with a, a phrase back in the 1990s, problem, reaction, solution. You Remember that, yeah. <laughs> you, you create the problem or, or the illusion of one, like COVID, like a COVID and climate change, a human cause climate change, the climate is always changing. Um, and you want a, a reaction from the public, which is, something must be done, what you're going to do about it. And then those who've covertly created the problem or the illusion of it offer the solution to the problem they have created. So if you sell the illusion of human caused climate change, then you can offer the solution of transforming human society to save us from human caused climate change. This is how it works. And in terms of um, the economy, the idea is that um, they uh, make the jobs disappear, mm -hmm. um, not least through AI. And then they say, oh, well, we're really nice people. We have made your jobs disappear. We're lovely people, we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay you a universal guaranteed income, a universal basic income. Every, every month, you're going to get a check from the government. It will be a pittance, mind, but you're going to get a check from the government. And that... Um, dependency on the government will come with strings. Because if you um, want to um, be a renegade against the government and the dystopia, well, you're not going to get your guaranteed basic income. So how else are you going to put food on the table? Because we've taken away all other means of doing it. And that's the idea. It's like, um, it's like they throw the fishing line out and then they start to pull it in. And uh, so if you look at um, certainly what happened in Britain during, during uh, COVID, they, they shut the country down, which was incredibly damaging to the economy. Lots of small businesses went out of business because they, they want rid of small business, even medium-sized business. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you see, if, if you have access to independent income, through an independent business. Okay, well, every, every business is connected to the system, but I mean, that's run independently. There's not some gigantic global corporation. Right. If you have access to an income from something like that, you are not dependent on the government. Exactly. But if they can get rid of all those independent jobs um, and make you dependent on the government for your ability to, to put food on the table in any form, then they control you. And what controls you um, is dependency. Um, so this is where they want to take it. And um, people um, uh, kind of, we hear that AI is going to be some uh, jobs, uh, massive job destroying uh, um, phenomenon. But uh, even those people, I don't think, grasp just how many jobs are going. And the other thing, when we, when we talk about connecting the dots and we talk about dependency equals control, this is why they're destroying the food supply. This is why they're targeting the farmers. Right. This is why, certainly in this country now, with this ludicrous, insane uh, Labour government of Keir Starmer in this country just got in, 
They want to cover vast tracts of farming land with solar farms and wind turbines. Um, your um, you're seeing the targeting of farmers to places like like uh, the Netherlands and Germany, uh, and 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 who is the biggest owner of farmland in America? Bill Gates. Bill Gates, right? So and, and and the Chinese are buying up great chunks of of American farmland as well. So what they're basically doing is is um, controlling the production of food, and if you are dependent for your food supply upon sources you don't control, you are dependent on those sources and forces. And, and th th this, is, this is where it's going. It's about creating global dependency, thus global control. That's interesting. And speaking of AI, uh like we're told that we're in a quantum computing and AI arms race, like Donald Trump announced in 2020 that one billion per year will be invested in quantum computing. In the US, China invests about three times as much. Elon Musk announced that he's investing 10 billion this year alone to build up the biggest supercomputer of the world in Memphis to train his AI Grok. And he's also training Tesla cars and robots to function autonomously. Google and other big tech companies are outdoing each other, building supercomputers too. And obviously, they've been gathering and storing the data of billions of smartphones for years now. And the question now is, are these countries really working against each other in an arms race? No way. Or are there connections between these players? And are they actually working on a kind of a common goal? And if yes, what would that be? You're, you're absolutely right. Um, you see... This is, this is the, the, great, um, the great con. Um, you have in politics, you have left v. right. And then in, um, in, 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 the, in the background, they're all mates. I mean, some of them might disagree with each other genuinely, but a lot of them, the key people, they're all mates, really. You, know, you notice when um, uh, Donald Trump won the 2016 election and, and, and there was a chant Every time he came on the stage, often, oh, jail Hillary, jail Hillary, and he would go along with it. Jail Hillary, yeah, jail Hillary. And then Hillary uh, Clinton. It, it, yeah. it, Hillary Clinton. And immediately after uh, he won the election, he was asked if he was going to jail Hillary Clinton. And he said, oh, no, she's, she's, she's lovely. We, we should um, respect all the, uh, the things that she's done for this country and all that stuff. So it's, it's, all, it's, okay. it's, all, it's all crap. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the Clintons, um, when they were the, the de Democratic uh, president in the White House and, and, and the Bushes, who were the, the president either, basically either side of him with, um, with the two Bushes. Yeah. Um, they were mates. I mean, I've, 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 I've not only mates, they were, they were part of a criminal operation running drugs in America out of the MENA airstrip and other places in Arkansas when, he was, uh, when Clinton was governor for Arkansas. So the, 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 what we're looking at in terms of politics left and right is theater. It's vaudeville, right? Uh, but, and that's to keep us believing in the political system and the fact that because we have a vote every four or five years, somehow we're in control of who, who runs the government. But the thing is that you, you have the, the left and the right and, in this puppet show, and then you go one step back in the shadows, and the same hands are controlling both. Which is why, um, no matter who's in power, the same left or right, the same agenda unfolds for humanity. Is now, that, does I, that apply to like USA and China as well, like on the country level? Yeah, well, th it's one of the things I've been saying over the over the decades. Um, this global cult has no borders. They are for. Um, population consumption only. That's to make you think that there are different countries uh, with different agendas. There's not. There's a global cult that works through all of them. So China is an interesting, an interesting point because um, what, what happened, I've written about this at length in some of the books, the Mao revolution was a global cult revolution. He was a global cult um, operative. And the reason for that revolution was to um, create 
a closed society, which it was for a very long time, it still is to a point, but not like it was, that um, through which you could incubate a, um, a structure, a system, not least in the end using artificial intelligence, um, of total human control. And once you'd perfected that and incubated it mm -hmm. within the Chinese arena, then you play it out across the world, right? So it's no coincidence that COVID came out of China in the official story. And what has happened since that happened is that the West has become more and more like China in terms of um, technological control and, uh, and impositions. So um, I, I've seen um, uh, documentaries in which um, someone was sent out onto the streets of a uh, Chinese city. And the idea was for the um, AI system to find them. Mm -hmm. It took minutes. And what's also happening in China is, um, and this is because it's the incubator of the global system, mm -hmm. as I've been saying for years and years, if you want to know what's, gonna, what's planned for the West tomorrow, look at China today, is um, you have this social credit system whereby... Um, you know, they're, they're basically under 24-7 surveillance. There's millions of cameras in every city. Um, and, um, and what happens is if your behavior suits the government, you're basically you're compliant and you do what they say, you get the credits. And if you don't, you get them taken away. And eventually you, you're not um, able to um, function in mainstream society. You can't go on a train. You can't go on a plane. And this is the system they want to play out across um, the, the world. And this is where the, um, the digital currencies come in and why they want a digital economy. Mm -hmm. It's because once they have that, um, they can do what they do in China, which is if you, for instance, go jaywalking in China, across the road when you shouldn't, even though there's no cars coming, um, then um, you can be fined before you get home, it's taken out of your bank account through the okay. through the digital system, and this is the this is the plan. You know you know these um, um, these cameras that are going up all over the cities. I mean, in London, London. Yeah. oh, in London, we've got this this um, scam called ULES, Ultra Low Emission Zone, um, and they've got all these cameras in. It's twelve pounds fifty um, if you've got the wrong type of vehicle just driving off your own um, uh, drive or outside your own house, you go past a camera, immediately it's £12.50 if, uh, a day if you've not got the right kind of vehicle. And those cameras, which are everywhere, um, are not there to police you, Les. That's, that's, the, that's the, the foot in the door. Right. They are the number plate cameras to... Um, police the 15-minute cities and the, um, the no-go zones that people are, are, are planned to live in to save us from climate change. Um, so all these, things, um, all these things connect. And, uh, the, you know, I said in 2008 when you had the, um, the banking crash mm -hmm. that the next one that's planned, you will hear on Mars. Um, hmm. uh, be, because it's that big. Well, Here's the situation. Mm -hmm. Problem, reaction, solution. Mm -hmm. while, while the status quo is going along okay, um, if it's not broke, don't mend it. Um, people, if you come along and say, we want to bring this in, we want to bring that in, they're, they're, they'll, they'll go, well, no, look, everything's fine. We don't we need that, right? But if you crash the status quo, whatever it is, then you've got a problem. You've got a, a, a point of transition because the status quo is gone. It's in disarray. 
This is what a financial crash does. Mm -hmm. And then you go, well, w w do something. What are we going to do? And, and that's when they come forward with a solution. And the solution is a transformation of the financial system into a digital control system. And this is what, what they're doing all the time. They are manufacturing problems um, and then offering the solutions to the problems they have themselves created. This is happening all the time. And a lot of these problems are actually not problems at all. Um, I mean, we talk about um, human-caused uh, uh, global warming. It's, it's a nonsense. It's scientific nonsense. You, you look at weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that justified it, that catastrophic invasion of Iraq. There were none. But the perception was that there were because it was repeated all the time, not least through the media. And, and therefore, um, they, they, they invaded, and they invaded on a lie. And, and then they go, oh, well, there were no uh, weapons of mass destruction. But by then, the deed is done. The catastrophe is underway. And it's led to so many other things that have gone on in the, in the, in the Middle East. And, and so when people tell you, when, when the official sources tell you that um, there's a problem and this is why there's a problem. Well, the, the thing to start off from is you're lying to me. Because if you look through history, that's the common theme. Authority lies. It's what it does. It's what it's there for. Therefore, if you authority are telling me this is what the situation is, First of all, I'm going to take it immediately that you're lying to me. My next question is, why are you lying to me? And, 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 and you will know the answer to that by seeing what they say is the solution to what they're lying to you about. And, and, and you know, you will find sometimes when you research this that, uh, well, OK, authority is telling the truth here or telling the truth there. But overwhelmingly, it will be lying to you. And, uh, and that's, that's the place to start. So when they told me there was a deadly virus, um, my immediate reaction was, you're lying to me. So therefore, um, what's the solution? And I thought, the solution, you're going to come along with a bloody vaccine as the solution to what you're telling me this, this is going on. And, and that's how it turned out, of course. And, and so, you know, to, to start off with... Um, the perception that authority is lying to you is a very good place to start. Uh, it stops you getting scammed. Does anybody start off with that perception? <laughs> <laughs> I think a few people do. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing how history confirms it. Right. And, and speaking of, I mean, you, you addressed this whole left-right uh, perception uh, game going on. Uh, speaking of that, I like this quote by, by one of the former U.S. presidents, Franklin D. Roosevelt, who brought the U.S. into World War II. Yeah. He said, uh, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. And taking that quote and then looking at Trump and Trump's appearance and how the media are dealing with him, now also with the recent happenings and, and uh, yeah, how it's being played out, and also the, all the alternative conservative political parties on the rise all over Europe. Uh, would you say, is that a planned step, yeah. or is that a real pushback against the agenda? Well, um, there's a lot of people that will believe it's a real pushback, mm -hmm. but um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Um, okay, uh, I'll tell you from my, my, my own experience, um, of being in this arena for 35 years now. Um, when I started out in 1990-ish, uh, um, there was no alternative media. Um, it didn't exist. I watched it grow, um, uh, particularly after 9-11. It grew very uh, uh, rapidly, and then uh, it's gone on. And um, even even great chunks of the so-called alternative media bought the COVID hoax, which was which was kind of quite depressing to watch. But a lot of a lot of people didn't mm -hmm. um, and and um, and called it out uh, and and, you know, did a lot of very good work um, alerting people to the fact that this fake vaccine was not going to be good for them. 
Why? Because it weren't meant to be. So then the cult is faced with um, a, a dilemma because um, for a lot of people, the genie was starting to leave the bottle because they realized, especially with a bit of hindsight, where they were starting to see that what, what alternative people were saying at the time, like that, that this is a hoax and, and the vaccine is um, the, the punchline uh, and it's not going to uh, have a great uh, uh, um, outcome for humans, was actually true, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, and the genius started to leave the bottle. What was happening is that people in, and I can tell you from my own experience, vastly greater numbers than ever before, were realizing the world weren't quite like they thought it was. And, and, and that the forces in, in, in so-called power were not the forces they thought they were. So the, the cult has a dilemma. Um, it knows the genie for a lot of people is not going back completely. It's not. Mm. Um, so what do we do? The, the danger is that that awakening goes on expanding to the point where it enters those areas of understanding which are going to be a real problem for this global cult and its agenda. So what they um, have done, and I've watched it happen, is they've put a lot of people into this alternative media who weren't there before, before COVID. They didn't build it. They don't bring anything new to the table in new research. They just um, regurgitate old stuff and call it bombshell broadcast and revelation, right? Um, and, 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 and basically what they've created is what I call the Barricade Brigade. And the Barricade Brigade um, is a, um, a limit to where they will go. So basically what's happened before... Um, before COVID and during COVID, a lot of people in the alternative media uh, realized that this was a puppet show left and right. And this is where the power was that worked through both. What has happened as a result of this hijack is that the alternative media center core that gets all the algorithmic promotion on things like X and gets all the financial promotion has regressed back into the puppet show. So if you look at the mainstream uh, of um, the alternative media, it is now right wing politics. That's what it is. And right wing politics that says we have a savior. Right. Like in this case, it's Trump, right? He's going to drain the swamp. What? A man who's been swimming in it all his life is going to drain it now. What? So, so, but, but, but what is politics there for? Which is why if you regress into it, into left and right, you, you've already lost the plot. When, um, for a long time, the cult was using um, royalty as its point of control, mm -hmm. uh, which suited it perfectly because you um, had uh, people who were um, leaders and, and rulers as a result of bloodline inheritance, and there was like one ruler. So you didn't have to control very many people, really, to run the show. But then um, humanity started to um, reach a point of, of um, maturity, shall we say, where they weren't having that anymore. Um, and, and you had the transition from royal control, although in places like Britain it still goes on, right. um, uh, to political control. Mm -hmm. So what is political control? Um, if you look at any political party, um, it's a pyramid. You've got the few at the top who run the show and dictate the pyramid. Then you've got all the members of the party going down, the MPs and, and right down into the activists, who are at different levels of the pyramid. 
Okay, so what you want to do is you want to become a member of parliament. All right. Well, in this country, you have to be selected by a local constituency party. This is the same with all the political parties. Um, and therefore, when you um, have your interview, you have to toe the party line. Mm. You have to say what the hierarchy says that party stands for at that time. If you then get elected into parliament, if you're going to progress up the greasy pole to be a minister or prime minister or whatever, you, first of all, you have to be ruthless. But secondly, you have to toe the party line because uh, rebels, well, they just don't progress, right? So, so what you've got is um, two um, hierarchies. In the, say you've got two parties like the Republicans and the Democrats. You've got two hierarchies. Um, and at the top, a very small number of people are running both pyramids. And then you go one step into the shadows and you've got the same people controlling both um, both hierarchies, thus both parties. So um, whether, whether one's in power or the other's in power, the same agenda um, kind of goes on um, unfolding. So um, you have, have created an illusion that we've moved from uh, no population control royal dictatorship to a population controls the political system. It doesn't. It doesn't because um, in the end, all these parties are controlled by the same people. And even if you've got one or two parties, smaller parties that are genuine, uh, first of all, the system makes sure they, they, they don't get to power. And even if they do, the system then uh, make sure that what they want to do for the betterment of the population, maybe, is not allowed to happen. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, that she wanted to do this, but then we had a wonderful example when uh, Boris Johnson um, was dethroned as prime minister of Britain while still in office. The Conservative Party um, had a, uh, a vote of members to decide who was going to be the new leader of the Conservative Party, who would, by definition, become the, the prime minister, the unelected prime minister. And they voted for a lady called Liz Truss. Now, Liz Truss was not the cult choice. What the cult wanted was Rishi Sunak. OK. So, so Liz Truss comes in and she was the shortest reigning prime minister in history because they started a financial run out of the, the, the stock market and the city of London. And she had to resign because there was financial mayhem. And, 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 and they said, oh, what do we do now? Oh, Rishi Sunak. And, and the cult choice got in. So, uh, you know, when you control the system, um, you, you're, you're even uh, able to stop genuine people doing what they would genuinely like to do. Um, yep. and, and, and so you, um, you have this situation, and this is the point of politics. Um, what, what, what happens at an election is that the population says, I'm voting for you, you do it. And for the next four or five years, you sit there and hope they do it. And they don't do it because there's no contract that what they tell you they're going to do and what they tell you they're not going to do, they actually do or not do in power. They'll do what they bloody like once they're in. No accountability. And, and, yeah, no accountability. And the, but but th this is the point. At the last election, something like 74 million people voted for Trump. They gave their power to Trump, not the last election, the 2016 election. They gave their power to Trump. Um, I think about the same vote last time as well in the, the second election, which Biden uh, officially, officially won. Um, <laughs> right. But um, so 74 million people. Now, are you going to make more of a difference by voting for Trump, who, who is just another gopher for the cult, with, with, with a different, with a different um, rhetoric, and a different image, or are you going to change um, society by 74 million people taking their power back, not giving it away, taking it back and saying, we're not cooperating with 
anything that is taking our freedom away and is to the detriment of our lives and our kids' lives and our kids' futures. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And, and so, Would that be a solution? Well, you have yeah. a situation, Definitely. right? Let's just break this down. And, and right. Because people say, what can you do? Well, let, let's just have a look at this. It's pure mathematics. They tell us there's 8 billion people in the world, right? Right. The number of people in full knowledge of what they're doing in terms of creating this global dystopia is a tiny, tiny fraction of the 8 billion. 8 billion cannot be controlled by those people without the cooperation of the 8 billion, without the acquiescence of the 8 billion. They can't be done. So what, what they do is they create political uh, parties so that people can fight over uh, in the puppet show. Um, they uh, create uh, different uh, belief systems that can fight with each other for, um, for uh, the, the uh, you know, ha have it, having uh, the, the power over the other. Um, and, and they can divide and rule us. So we're fighting each other while not looking up and seeing the same hand is controlling the strings of, of all these different factions. And, and it, it, you know, if we, if we just said, look, you may believe something different to me. What's the problem? The, the problem only arises if you try to impose what you believe on me and I try to impose what I believe on you. That's the only time the problem um, occurs. Because otherwise, otherwise we can say, well, I don't agree with you on that and you don't agree with me on this, but let's have a beer. It's not a problem. You know, and, and we'll, we'll discuss it. Maybe you'll persuade me. Maybe I'll persuade you. But it ain't a problem. There's nothing to fight over. And, 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 but, but because belief systems tend to want to dominate, mm -hmm. um, they, they are seeking to, to, to impose their belief on other people. And that's when you have the problem. That's where you have the divide and rule. Um, you know, you can, you can watch a football match and you could, li you could really like one of the teams to win, right? But if they don't, nobody dies, right? But what you then see is because I support this team and you support that team, and, and maybe my team's won or your team's won, we must now have a fight out the back. <laughs> Why? Why? It's a football game. And this is just a brief experience. We are not human. We are consciousness having a brief experience in a vehicle we call human. We are eternal, infinite awareness, all of us. We are all expressions of one whole. <coughs> what happens through control of perception is that that oneness, that um, unity, fragments and fractures into factions of belief systems, which again is not a problem unless you want to impose yours on someone else, right. you know? And, and, and if, if we would just stop fighting each other and respect each other's right to have a different view to us, a different lifestyle, whatever. I mean, my, my philosophy on life is very simple. Do what you like so long as you don't impose it on anyone else. Impose it psychologically or impose it physically, right? If you people want to want to want to act like that and you're all agreed that you want to you want to live like that, well you live like that. But you start imposing on others what how you want to live, then I'm interested. And and, and my uh, reason for doing what I do is not because, you know, people must live as they choose to live. It's because it's being imposed on people who don't want to live like that. Um, you know, if you travel around the world and you, you go to South America and Central America and parts of Asia, etc., Africa, um, there's vast numbers of people who are not having a good time. They're just, they're just trying to survive another day. Right. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't. 
But the, because of divide and rule, it is. And speaking of this divide and rule game and these belief systems, would you say that they're being built up and actually funded into being and, and fueled? And if so, by, by whom is that happening right now, especially with this left-right paradigm? That we're yeah, well, if you, look, if you look at the alternative media, um, uh, the, the, the MAM, as I call it, the mainstream alternative media, this, this hijack that's moved in and um, has, um, has taken the, the algorithmic support and the financial support and all that stuff, um, you've got certain players in there. Um, there's Tucker Carlson. And I'm not saying these people are bad people because... Um, If, if you want to hold the barricade and go here and no further, you don't even have to have people in there that know they're doing that. You just have to have people in there, which you massively promote, whose belief system and perception of the world is that, that politics is where it's at, that politics is the answer and you put Trump in and things change and all that stuff. You don't have to have um, agents in there. There are some. Don't, don't let's kid ourselves on that. But overwhelmingly, you don't need to. You just put people in with a certain belief system and you promote the hell out of them and, and, and they'll hold the line. They'll hold the line because they don't think there's anything beyond the line. Right. Um, and and this, is what, this is what's happened. And if you look at um, the, um, first of all, the, the, the major names, I'm talking uh, Joe Rogan, I'm talking um, uh, Russell Brand, I'm talking, well, I mean, Alex Jones has even been pulled into it. He, he was, you know, from the old alternative media, but he's been pulled into it as well. And you look at... Um, Uh, Tucker Carlson so, and, and so on. There's another guy called Brett Weinstein and his brother, um, Eric Weinstein. So you've got those people. They're giving all the promotion. But then there's another, there's another um, group in the shadows around them. And they are multi-billionaire tech operatives who are funding and orchestrating the suppression of the big picture and holding the line on the little picture because it suits their uh, agenda. So um, you've, got, um, you've got one in particular called Peter Thiel. Founder, Peter. founder of PayPal, right? PayPal. Yeah, he was one of the founders of PayPal. Um, he was the first um, private investor in Facebook, made a fortune out of it. But it's very easy you know, <clears throat> to make a fortune if you know what's going to happen. All right. Right. Um, so you're part of the club. It, it's like George Soros, you know, in, in, investing um, uh, at the bottom of a market and then it goes up and selling at the top of the market. Well, it seems to be like financial brilliance. But if you know when the market's top, because those uh, uh, who, are, who have made it go up are telling you, then you'll sell at the top and you'll get back in at the bottom when, when they tell you it's as low as it's going to go. Because the whole stock market, the financial system is completely controlled. And if you have that knowledge because you're connected to the inside, then you can make a freaking fortune. You don't have to be brilliant. You just have to act on what you know. So you've got um, uh, Peter Thiel, and he was the uh, co-founder of a, a company called Palantir. And Palantir um, is a provider of surveillance and high-tech um, technology for the Pentagon and the um, global um, intelligence networks. Peter Thiel is on the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group, hmm. um, uh, right? He's a globalist, as they, they call him in the alternative media. Right. Um, now, Peter Thiel... Um, is a mate of, of Musk. He's a, make, a mate of a guy called Mark Andreessen of Andreessen Horowitz. All these people, another guy called David Sachs, all these people are multi-billionaires who have suddenly moved as one unit to support Donald Trump. And mm -hmm. they are, they've moved in on the alternative media or a certain part of it. So Peter Thiel is an investor in Rumble. It's supposed to be an alternative platform. Another investor in Rumble is J.D. Vance. Yeah. 
J.D. Vance is a business associate of Peter Thiel, a globalist steering committee member of the Bilderberg Group. And J.D. Vance has just been named as Trump's um, vice, vice presidential, presidential running mate. Mm -hmm. um, another guy who's in that immediate Trump circle is a guy called um, Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, Ramaswamy and um, J.D. Vance went to the same school um, at the same time. They um, were, um, uh, they are both um, uh, venture capitalists. And who invests in the companies of both of them? Peter Thiel. Who is Peter Thiel's financial and business advisor? Eric Weinstein, brother of, of uh, um, Brett Weinstein, who's suddenly become one of these uh, stars of the alternative media out of bloody nowhere. And so what you have is this, um, this background uh, grouping of billionaires, and they are tech billionaires. They are AI billionaires. Mm -hmm. And um, what they're doing is orchestrating a situation whereby they control um, the government to the point where they get what they want in terms of the introduction of AI. Wow. And, and, and J.D. Vance has made a fortune out of tech investments through his um, teal um, invested company. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a club. What, what was it George Carlin said? It's a big club and you ain't in it. That's what it is. That's what's happening. Yeah. And so when you're, on, you're, you're not part of that club, which is why I've always worked alone, I've never worked in, in, a, in a group of any kind, you can see it. And that, that, see, this is the point. There are some great alternative journalists around who, who see beyond the barricade, but they don't get the algorithmic... Um, promotion and the financial promotion that the, the here and no further people do. And that's why, you, you know, you had this great explosion after, after COVID in the, in the wake of COVID of, of awakening and, um, and, uh, and, and, and more and more new information. And notice it stopped. The Barricade Brigade, and I watch them all the time, they don't bring anything new to the table. They just regurgitate old stuff Mm -hmm. and call it revelation. It's been in my books for 20 years. You know, oh, bombshell broadcast. You know, it's been in my books 20 years ago, mate, right? They're just regurgitating it because they're holding the line. Right. And there are other alternative journalists who can see well beyond that, but they don't get the support and they don't get the promotion. Right. That's interesting. Well, our time is running up. So maybe one final question cool. to yeah, you. Go ahead. That would be, I mean, you have now all these 35 years of experience in, in going against the mainstream. What would you say was the key or is, is the key to that you would give our audience to understand these global conspiracies? And, and what would be the key of, for the discernment of, of seeing through our, our world? Okay. Um, the thing is um, to, see, to see that... Um, the world appears to be fragmented in terms of events, and they seem to be random, but they're not. I'm not saying that, you know, people say, do you believe in the um, conspiracy theory of history or the cock-up theory? As if they're exclusive, they're not. Some things that go wrong are just people who are not very bright doing stupid things. I, what I'm talking about are the societal changing events. They're the ones that drive the direction of human society. They're the ones that are not random. They are, they are calculated. Um, and, and I guess to, to, to put it in, um, in, in a simple structure, because, you know, when I started out in 1990, I... Um, I, 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 you, know, you know when you, 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 do a, you do a jigsaw puzzle, I haven't done one for years, but when I do a jigsaw puzzle, the, the, what I want to do first is I want the straight bits. I want the frame, the frame before I do anything. Right. <laughs> and then you put the pieces in, and what you, what you notice is the more pieces you put in, the quicker you put them in, because now you can see where they go, because you can see where the picture's unfolding, right? And that's what this kind of research is. And so when I started out, I thought, okay, I can see that a few people control the world. Mm -hmm. 
My question is, how do they do it? They must be a structure. Otherwise, they, everything would just be chaos. So this, this is, this is uh, what I put together a long time ago. Um, if you imagine a spider's web um, around the world, and each strand of the web is a secret society or a semi-secret group, and, and, and at the external part of the web is a government or a government agency or a corporation or a CIA. Mm -hmm. And at the center of the web is the spider. Mm -hmm. On a, another interview, we'll get into what the spider is because that, that was that, getting interesting. That, that's, when, that's when you. That's when. That's when the whole world really opens up when you realise what the spider is. That's that's what the here and no further is all about. Don't let them know what the spider is, right? So um, you got the spider, and the spider is uh, driving the global agenda. The strands in the web immediately around the spider. Um, they're the ones that are really in the know of the, the whole agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and, and most of those don't even have names because it makes them harder to track. They are really exclusive. Then you come out um, from the spider and now you're entering the realm of the secret societies we do know about. We don't know what they do and decide, but we know they exist. This is the Freemasons. And I'm talking, you know, the inner core of the Freemasons, not Bill and Joe down the local lodge. Um, I'm talking the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templar, the Opus Dei, the, um, uh, uh, the inner core of the Jesuit order, etc. Um, and and that, that's still in the hidden. Mm -hmm. And they're f all these organizations are fiercely compartmentalized. So only a few at the top in any of these organizations know what the real gender is. The rest are um, uh, suppressed in terms of their knowledge, depending on how low they are in the pyramid. It's called degrees of knowledge, basically. And then as you come out still in the hidden, you hit what I call the cusp. Mm -hmm. The cusp is where um, the agenda that comes through the hidden secret societies um, hits this cusp point where it's from here played out into the world of the scene mm -hmm. through governments, government agencies, um, intelligence agencies, uh, the Pentagon, so all these stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, at this cusp... This is where you find the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. This is where you find the Bilderberg Group. This is where you find this explosion of often Soros-funded uh, NGOs. This is where you find the think tanks, as they're called. And their job, and again, they're compartmentalized, so most people in them, the lower levels, will have no idea what they're part of. Their job is to take the um, agenda from the hidden and to play it out into the public arena through influencing government policy, corporation policy, um, the, the policy of authority in general. Mm -hmm. and, and that's classically, is it not, mm -hmm. what the World Economic Forum does. Right. That's what the Bilderberg Group does. Steering committee member, Peter Thiel. That right, J.D. Vance? Oh, yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> so... Um, it's, it, this is where it's, it's all connected. So yeah. when you come out into the world of the scene, mm -hmm. um, what it seems like to the population is that there are random corporations, uh, random organizations, random governments and random everything, right? But when you, you, you know the web, mm -hmm. th you realize they're not random at all. For instance... Every organization, whether it's the World Health Organization or whether it's Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, if you go deep enough into it, you're going to attach the, to the web. You're going to reach that point in the organization where it attaches to the web. And at that point, at that level, they're all the same organization. Hmm. So um, the World Health Organization... Um, says, uh, this is what you must believe about COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately, and, and if you don't know about the web, then it's kind of bewildering. The Silicon Valley corporations like Facebook and YouTube say, 
we're going to censor anyone who is at odds with the World Health Organization version of COVID. And you think, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to be the public square. You're supposed to be the, the you know, right. where, where debate and opinion is exchanged. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They mm -hmm. said, we're going to censor anything that, that is at odds with the World Health Organization version of COVID. Why is that? Because at a deep enough level of the World Health Organization, which is basically run by Gates, uh, who is a gopher for the Rockefellers, and the Rockefellers were the creators of the World Health Organization in 1948. Um, and and the, uh, um, the, 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 the cult level, the, the web level of Facebook, they're the same organization. So they are censoring on behalf of the web um, the agenda uh, or, or, or protecting the agenda being um, uh, circulated by the World Health Organization. Then you have organizations like the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and the Food and Drug Administration and the MHRA, which is the, their version in Britain and every other country will have a version, an organization that's supposed to protect the population from the big pharma cartel, right? Through making sure that, that everything's safe that they're bringing out. Right. But if you look at the COVID fake vaccine, your Pfizer's, and it, that was a military operation, by the way, the Pfizer's and the uh, BioNTech's and the, um, the uh, Moderna's, they went to these um, uh, public protection health organizations and they said, uh, we, we want to uh, use this fake vaccine on lots of other pe lots of people and, and we want to bring it lower and lower and lower till we're doing it to giving it to babies. And uh, we haven't tested it. And uh, the, even the trials we did have, they weren't very good. So what you'd think if there were public protection organizations like the CDC, they'd go. Stop. You're having a laugh, mate. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere near the population with that. But they didn't. And they didn't everywhere. They gave them permission. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the cult web owns the, the um, public protection organizations mm -hmm. and they own Big Pharma. In fact, they created Big Pharma through the, the again, the Rockefellers, J.D. Rockefeller and people like that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what's actually happening, if you see how it works, is the cult is going to the cult to ask permission to play out a cult agenda. This is how it works. And unfortunately, the, the alternative media, the mainstream part of it, has regressed to, to, to no longer understand this as, as it did before. And thus, it's, um, it's, it's, it's leading the population by a different path, maybe, but it's leading them um, inexorably to the same edge of the same cliff. Um, because this is an important point. You brought it up um, near the start. Musk is saying that AI could be the end of humanity. At the same time that he's bringing out more and more AI to, to do exactly that. Right. Now, there was a time, I remember it, I still do it, um, where the uh, alternative media was calling him out. Mm -hmm. They were saying, well, hold on, Mr. Musk. You uh, uh, are uh, a, a, a front man for bringing out all this AI, you are putting up low orbit satellites by the week now, tens of thousands of them they have permission for, that are firing um, 4G, 5G, et cetera, at the earth, creating this electromagnetic cloud to which humans are supposed to be connected. Um, and, and it's causing a lot of, um, of damage for reasons I go into in the books, a damage of people. Um, and, and you're... Um, You've got this Neuralink operation where you, you, you want to connect um, uh, humans to AI. When you say that uh, AI could be the end of humanity, right. and, and what he's saying, of course, is, well, yeah, AI could be the end of humanity. So what we have to do is, is connect to AI so that we uh, save humanity. It's nonsense. 
That's what the alternative <laughs> media was saying, that, right. that, that you are driving the transhumanist agenda. What happened then? He bought Twitter and turned it into X. And suddenly all that exposure of Musk disappeared because he was letting people say, well, he was letting a lot of people say things up to a point. You go too far, you hit the shadow banning big time. And I know what that's like, mm -hmm. um, where, where you, you, know, you, may, you may have 640 odd thousand uh, followers of your page, but most of them don't see your posts. You know, that's how it works. Um, and, and so you, um, you suddenly, because he's, he, he's now become this, this free speech god, um, they've stopped calling him out on all these agendas, fundamental cult agendas, AI agendas, and, and, and uh, satellite agendas, that he's, um, he was called out um, previously. And this is the other thing about, about Musk. You know, again, you know when, I'll tell you what, you know when Elon Musk is lying because his lips are moving, right? Um, <laughs> what, what he does, this is how it works. He'll pick a fight with, a, with a, like a country like Brazil or he'll pick a fight with Australia or something, an Australian government. Oh, I'm defending free speech. I'm not having this. In the background, um, and this is from Twitter data, X data, um, X Twitter under Musk has taken down more content on government say-sos than the Twitter before he bought it. Really? In the six months to March of this year, Musk took down 40,000 pieces of content globally hmm. on the say-so of the European Union. But what he does, he picks public fights and it hides what he's doing as a matter of course in the background. Um, mm. And, and you know, um, what, we've, what, we've, what we're looking at is, is a, a, again, a perceptual um, hijack mm. whereby because he, he talks a good story and, you know, people can say this, that and the other on Twitter, the whole agenda that he's pushing um, suddenly gets um, a, free, a, a free pass. Right. And then suddenly, and we're seeing it now in the last few days, he said, I will never basically back anyone uh, politically because uh, uh, X has to stay uh, neutral to be credible. He's now pouring money into Trump and, and supporting Trump. These people like Anderson and, um, and, and Teal and what have you, who, who um, are all in that same gang, are now uh, are moving to Trump and Sachs and all these other people. Um, major Silicon Valley billionaires. Um, and uh, they're the ones that are funding the mainstream alternative media that suddenly is not being alternative at all. And this is no accident. And so, um, you know, I'm 72 now and um, I've got no need to do this, except um, I don't want to see the world for uh, those that will be here when I go, um, that these people want to leave them with and give them. And uh, mm. I'll, 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 no matter what abuse I get from the mainstream alternative media and their followers, um, I will go on calling them out because it's so important that we realize that um, beyond, beyond the political... <laughs> oh, thank you. Beyond the political barricade, that's where the answers lie, and that's why they don't want us to go there. Right. Wow. Thank you, David, for connecting all these dots for us. That's, that was amazing. Yeah, and that was scratching Thanks. the surface, that was. <laughs> right. In this Thank book, you so this much. book is coming out on um, September the first. The reveal, um, and it's also going to be a, an audio book. I'm just recording it now, and mm -hmm. um, and a um, uh, an ebook, of course. Uh, but um, that goes so far in the deep in the rabbit hole. I mean, you know, it's um, if people realise what lies beyond the political arena in terms of the vastness, not just of the conspiracy, but the vastness of who we actually are. Mm. Um, 
they'd never believe it um, from the perspective that they're just little me human. They're not little me human. There's no little me human except the perception of little me human. Mm -hmm. We are all that is, has been, and ever can be, having a brief experience called a human. And when we realize that, then no cult is going to control us. And that's well, what they don't want us to know. Well said. Thanks, David. And, and here's Cheers, your mate. applause. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the AZK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. In a nutshell, a burst of bull's eyes. Thank you for your excellent questions, Daniel. Thank you, David Icke. We love you. Thank you for being with us.